I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel, and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel. We'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats with similar ships, review pros and cons, and I'll give you my thoughts on the Sentinel. If you haven't seen it already, my loadout guide for the Vanguard Sentinel can be found here and on the end screen. I go live on Twitch just before every YouTube release. Come and hang out. Enough with the formalities. Let's get to it. The Aegis A3 Vanguard Sentinel is an electronic warfare ship that's designed to fight smart instead of taking enemies head on. The conversion features an AR cockpit, an external E-war pod, decoy missiles, and a set of EMP charges. Vanguard Sentinels often provide necessary combat support for combined operations. A lone Sentinel assigned Wild Weasel tasks is frequently paired with the Harbinger Bombers and Warden Escorts for large attack missions. The Sentinel is manufactured by Aegis Dynamics, a human spacecraft manufacturer based on Sestos. Today, the company is a major manufacturer of both civilian and military crafts. The Vanguard Sentinel has three other variants, the Fighter Variant Warden, the Dropship Hoplite, and the Fighter Bomber Harbinger. As of today, the Sentinel is not available for sale or upgrade on the Pledge Store standalone, but when it does, it sells for $275 and for a very limited time. The Sentinel is available for purchase in-game for just over $2 million off of UEC. Now that you know a little bit more about the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. The first thing we'll notice is the size 5 hardpoint with a gimbaled attrition laser repeater under the nose. Above that, we can see four proprietary distortion repeaters in the nose. Here we can see the intakes and our retro thrusters glowing. This is my favorite aesthetic feature of the Vanguard series, and on the Sentinel I think it works well with the blue and yellow paint. Above these, we can see the size 4 proprietary missile rack. And further up, we can see the manned turret with two distortion cannons. Moving on, underneath the hull, we have another size 4 missile rack with two size 3 missiles. Just behind this, we can see the track landing gear exclusive to the Vanguard series. Here we can see the Vanguard's wings are tucked away in landing mode. Around the rear, we can see the dual main thrusters. Underneath here is where we have the main and only entrance into the Vanguard. The starboard side is identical to the port side. Let's take a look inside. As we close the door, we'll turn around and see where the quantum drive is stored. Heading back into the cabin, on the port side we have armor storage. Next to this we have a head that features a shower, first aid kit, sink and mirror, and last but not least, a space shitter that I promise retracts when the ship is not bugged. Moving on, we have a floor to ceiling screen with data on, well, spaceship stuff. Next we have some server racks and an opening that I'm pretty sure is supposed to have the same engineering station from the warden, but I think it's bugged right now or they're preparing to add something that's unique to the sentinel here later. Turning around to the starboard side, we have two beds that can be used to log out in. Next we have amenities like what looks like a space cure egg and of course a nozzletron for, well, nozzling. Next to this, we have a munitions locker with four weapon racks. The turret is located in the middle of the cabin. Inside, we can see that the turret doesn't have a great view, but it's not terrible either. The turret features a 2D radar and four MFDs, but no ejection feature. Let's head towards the flight deck. It does have a door to separate the pilot from the rest of the crew. On our way up, we can see that there's a hidden compartment labeled radar with a ghostly looking shield generator in it. The port side has shield 1, power plant 1, and life support. The starboard side has shield 2 and power plant 2. 
Getting closer to the cockpit, we have our last set of component housings that house our coolers. All right, finally, we've made it to the cockpit. Up top, we have enunciator panels. Below this, a 3D radar and four MFDs underneath. The Vanguard Sentinel does not have an ejection system and probably will never have one. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected 10 ships, a medium fighter, the other Vanguard variants, and some EMP warfare ships. The Google Sheet document with this data is linked in the description. The Aegis Vanguard Sentinel weighs in at almost 239,000 kilograms and ties in eighth place. It fits in at 38 meters in length and ties in last place with the Vanguards and Freelancer. It totes zero SCU of cargo as well as most other ships on this list. It has a max crew size of three if the missing engineering station is above and it ties in second place with the Warden and Cutlass Blue. It carries 2,500 quantum fuel units and ties in first place with the Vanguards, Cuddy and Freelancer. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 171 meters per second and ties in sixth place. It strolls by gingerly with a max speed of 1,022 and ties in seventh place. It has a maximum pitch rate of 54 degrees per second and ties in fifth place. It has a maximum yaw rate of 54 degrees as well and ties in third place this time. It has a maximum roll rate of 110 degrees per second and ties in fifth place. It has a total hull HP of over 23,000 and ties in second place. It has a physical armor damage reduction of 2% and ties in fifth place. It has an energy armor damage reduction of 10% and ties in third place. It has an EM, IR, and CS reduction of 0%. The only ships on this list with stealth reductions are the Sabres. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of 3173 and takes first place. It shoots its way through with a default turret DPS of 1540 and takes first place again. Both its pilot and turret DPS should be taken with the grain of salt. These are distortion weapons. It has a stock missile payload of over 47,000 and ties in fourth place. And the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel is available for sale in-game for a little over 2 million off of UEC and takes the ninth spot. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. They will be available on displayed in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say its pros are, its weapon payload and range with size five and four size twos is unparalleled, excluding the other Vanguards, of course. The Vanguard series has pretty good hull HP and they all feature some sort of physical and energy armor reduction. Having 2,500 quantum fuel units is nice. You can equip the fastest size two drive and still almost make a trip from PO to Microtech and back. Having the weapon center mounted is great because if you lose a wing, you don't lose firepower. And having cabin space is great for box missions, and the amenities will certainly come in handy in the future. Having the turret is great for multi-crew gameplay. Its missile payload is great as well with four size four missile racks. Its EMP is something that currently sets itself apart from the rest of the Vanguard series. And its Alpha UEC price of 2 million is excellent, around 1.4 million less than the Warden and Hoplite. Another reason for the Sentinel over the rest of the Vanguards is its agility. Now, acceleration isn't data found in the game files due to reasons I don't have time to explain. So this data will likely never be available on Urkel. However, its acceleration can be calculated manually by a user recording its G-forces. Again, I don't have enough time to explain why I don't have enough time to explain, but thanks to the citizens over at Legacy Fleet, we can get this data from a handful of ships. As you can see by this graph, the Sentinel has much more acceleration than the Harbinger, and slightly more than the Warden. This cannot be ignored. For cons, I'd say its max speed is terrible. However, this only matters if you plan on running. Having bespoke weapons means you don't have as much of a variety of choices as well as having them fixed removes the option to be fully gimbaled. 
and it doesn't currently have an ejection system. So what are my thoughts? I have really enjoyed flying the Vanguards these past few weeks. They are almost perfect combat ships, nimble for their size, spacious interiors with amenities, devastating firepower, and a hefty missile payload. What more can you ask from a combat ship? I'll tell you, nothing. There is no reason in the game's current state, unless you can't afford it in game or in real life, to not own a Vanguard if you enjoy combat. Seriously, the only way to improve the Vanguard would be if they added a mining laser and SCU space to it. And that would be ridiculous. Although one SCU could allow you to store some FPS mineables, but we're not really in a position to complain, but I digress. All this sounds great, and I haven't even talked about what makes the Sentinel great over the other variants. It has a fucking EMP. And guess what, boys? EMP's got a buff in 3.11 PTU, but don't get too excited because people are already asking for a nerf. And it's the most nimble of the Vanguard variants. It breaks my heart to say this, but I think my Sabre is going to be collecting some dust in the back of my hangar for a while. The practicality and versatility of the Vanguard is just too good to ignore. Now, people are going to ask in the comments, what I think is better, the Harbinger or the Sentinel? I think I already know the answer, however, I will reserve my judgment for after I review the Harp. I may even revive the Ship Battle series for this. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my loadout guide for the Sentinel here. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this video, come and hang out. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime gaming subscriptions and sending out for UEC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminalchannel.tv to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible and your viewership, liking and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like, here's a video YouTube thinks you may like, and until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.